Welcome back, everybody, to a new edition of Paranormal Planet Live. Thank you for being with us this evening. Got some interesting updates for you guys. If you've not been to the show here before, watched the show before, I'm Jack Carey, your host and the founder of the Paranormal Intelligence Agency. Before we get started, make sure you come by and see us at paraintelagency.com. You will find all kinds of very detailed paranormal reports full of information that you will not find anywhere else, including here on our channel. So let's begin by talking about some interesting revelations that have come about at Skinwalker Ranch. Recently, the chief scientist, Travis Taylor, um, has done a series of interviews. In one of those interviews, he discusses uh, the fact that they had a rabbi come out to the ranch and perform a uh, ritual at the Homestead 2 location. And when he did the ritual, they saw a portal open in the sky. The fascinating thing beyond that is that the effect appeared to be repeatable because they were able to record the ritual, play back the recording at a later date, and uh, they were able to get the same result. That is uh, huge when it comes to, um, you know, the scientific study of what's actually occurring out there. And let's face it, it's beginning to the evidence is beginning to sort of pile up to suggest out of all of the theories that are out there that perhaps Skinwalker Ranch is one of those uh, interdimensional portals uh, that is just stronger than anywhere else, perhaps. He also went on to mention that he has experienced uh, the hitchhiker effect, which has been discussed at length uh, here on the program um, in previous episodes. And he came up with an interesting idea that had not occurred to me uh, previous to listening to him. And the idea that he had because of the hitchhiker effect and because um, of the way that it's able to follow you around and manifest itself, um, he wondered if this wasn't some form of quantum entanglement taking place. We do know through experiments that quantum entanglement is actually a thing. And could it be that consciousness, the consciousness of the person that is witnessing the event, somehow becomes quantumly entangled with uh, what's causing that phenomenon and therefore carries it along with them? It's an interesting idea. Uh, and like I said, one that had never occurred to me before. They were able to ascertain that with each and every event, they're able to record both gamma and microwaves. Uh, this is ionizing radiation. Um, the radiation apparently has the ability to self-direct or to direct itself. Uh, they say this because uh, Dr. Taylor was actually irradiated quite a bit at one of these incidents and people standing in very close proximity to him were not. Um, that should not happen. 
Um, add to that uh, the revelation that their GPSs at very crucial moments um, cease to operate on the ranch. So this phenomenon, this intelligence, what have you, has the ability to block out GPS in its given range. And that should be also quite impossible and leaves them scratching their heads. At this moment in time, they are engaged in providing multiple stimuli to the environment there at the ranch and then they are attempting to record the responses from that stimuli. Apparently, uh, there is quite a bit of unaired footage that will be coming out that shows quite a bit of profound um, activity um, that they were able to actually get on camera. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, I've discussed before the idea that Skinwalker Ranch is in itself part of overall UFO, UAP uh, disclosure, and there are some very obvious reasons for that. Um, and now we know that, in fact, Dr. Taylor was the chief scientist on the OSAP program, uh, which studied the hitchhiker effect of the UAP phenomenon. So all of the pieces of the puzzle are sort of coming together to uh, present us with a whole of what's occurring there and what might possibly be um, a doorway into another dimension or into many other dimensions for that matter. Now, I wanted to uh, also bring up CERN. Um, many of you will be aware that uh, CERN has fired back up. They are at it again with their crazy scientific experiments. There's all sort of conspiracy theories about CERN. Um, and that they may, in fact, be plotting to open an interdimensional doorway, uh, etc. In a recent article interviewing one of the uh, CERN scientists um, stated that they were in fact trying to produce and then track gravitons. Um, gravitons being a a signature of gravity and nobody really knows if it's coming from another place, another dimension. And apparently they're able to watch these gravitons on such a scale that if they disappear, they know that they're somehow getting through into another dimension. And I would argue that that is in fact a first step in finding a way to create wormholes into other dimensions, something which is uh, uh, extremely unprudent in, in my opinion. So uh, moving on, shifting gears here, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about cryptids. So, Many of you have watched my Invisible Predator in the Woods video. If you haven't, please take a look. Um, those beings are, in fact, out there. In the um, second video that I produced, uh, the Invisible Predator update, I talk about how uh, Jan Maccabee, the wife of uh, Dr. Maccabee, a um, world famous ufologist and optical uh, scientist had an experience with one of these creatures and because of her husband 
being so involved with the UFO phenomenon, I believe that there is every reason um, to have the idea that these predator-like beings are, in fact, part of the hitchhiker effect. Um, it's something that we have to consider at this stage of the game. Um, also, I would like to bring up the idea that there are animals on the planet, one of which is, is one of my favorite animals, and that's the mimic octopus, is a real life, biological, here and now, shapeshifter. Uh, here is a creature that can look like any surface it lands on. It can change its colors at will. It can change its body into various shapes. It can pretend to be a snake to, to lure prey. Um, and many scientists are beginning to discuss the notion that the octopus um, has such a high intelligence level that it may in fact be on par with humans and it has DNA which isn't shared anywhere else on earth which has also led many scientists to believe that perhaps octopuses are an alien species that somehow arrived on this planet um, and that's important because here we have a biological precedent for what might be a land-based life form with those same abilities, but on land. The ability to change its colors at will, its shape at will, um, to look like things it's not, uh, to lure prey. It's not outside of the realm of possibility when you consider just how bizarre uh, our planet really is. Um, so, and recently I came across a Bigfoot uh, encounter um, being discussed by the gentleman it happened to. And as with all, um, you know, secondhand retellings of encounters, you never really know the quality of the credibility other than initial impressions and looking for things that are obvious red flags and things that are worthy of note. And in this particular encounter, this gentleman claims it occurred to him on his family farm when he was 10 years old. He describes a lengthy relationship with a juvenile Bigfoot that he and his friends apparently all thought was a someone's pet orangutan. And he describes a profound event where after having made uh, friends basically with this creature, um, he displayed aggression by standing up and sort of beating his chest playfully, and apparently that provoked a, a hostile encounter, um, which then leads ultimately to the killing of this young Sasquatch. Now, that's just to describe how and why um, what apparently was a very impromptu type of autopsy, which took place after the animal was killed uh, by being shot by the father. And I found it very, very interesting because of a couple of details that were included in this retelling that would be hard, I think, for someone to just invent off the top of their head, uh, to throw into the story, because uh, if anything, the bizarre nature of the claim would cast even more shadow on the credibility. 
but here goes. So the gentleman claims that after the animal was killed, he uh, came around the barn and various buildings on this property to find his father and uncle cutting this thing open. Um, and he says that two very strange things about this animal, about this Bigfoot. One was that it's got extremely long, tusk-like canine teeth that automatically protrude as the creature opens its mouth. The second was an apparent second heart and or second chamber, something, an extra organ that apparently was used in the blood pumping process. That's uh, two details I've never heard in any encounter uh, that I've read, and I've read thousands of them. And so it stood out to me as something um, worthy of note. Uh, like I said, you can never tell the credibility, but there were many details in this gentleman's encounter that lended themselves to authenticity in my mind. So, and moving on, um, I still do correspondent work for uh, Gaia Productions on Ancient Mysteries. Recently, uh, I did a report on the new finding at a mysterious pyramid complex uh, in South America, in Peru, called Chavin de Hawar. Um, and I mention it uh, during this uh, cryptid um, block that I'm discussing because these people had um, very strange iconography. They have lots of statues of large-headed, large-eyed beings with extremely long canine teeth, but with human teeth also. Now, that's fascinating uh, because those same statues have been discovered also in Colombia at another mysterious site. Chavin de Hawar was built at 13,000 feet altitude, and the site in Colombia was also built at the highest point in Colombia. Um, the statues are so similar that they must have had a common origin, and yet the Chavin people are a complete mystery to archeologists as to who they were. Most of those temple complex are ruled either Mayan or Incan, but not the Chavin people. They were clearly a different kind of culture. Interesting then that they too were building pyramids. They were able to carve glyphs onto two pillars and the pillars are made out of uh, dolerite, one of the hardest substances on earth, the hardest rock on earth, and it requires diamond tip tools. Um, some German uh, engineers have looked at the inscriptions and some of them believe it actually depicts a machine of some kind, a steam powered machine. Uh, fascinating. So, and I mentioned that for the people out there that are interested in dogman sightings, some of you may be aware of my research uh, into the Aztec connection with dogmen. Um, if not, it is out there. Okay, and also, lately we've had a lot of uh, interesting articles come out about Travis Walton. Now he is the uh, gentleman who was the subject of the movie Fire in the Sky. The events in the movie don't exactly depict scene for scene his recollections of what occurred, so I encourage you to actually read his personal account of what he remembers occurring. 
because the details are important. And I mentioned the articles that are out there um, coming through mainstream media outlets because here again, the focus is turning to alien abduction and the Travis Walton case um, might just be the seminal uh, alien abduction case of all time. So that's something that's, that's out there. If you're unfamiliar with his story, take a look at it. So, and another theory occurs to me when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch. And I say that in, well, in light of or with the idea of this possibly being some sort of entity as suggested by Terrence McKenna uh, and as being now suspected by some of the scientists involved, this phenomenon, the UFO phenomenon, in a lot of ways has always exhibited technology just out of reach of humanity. And that might be a very important clue. And you can go all the way back to the, the famous airship sightings of the 1800s, um, even as a, a perfect example of this. And it occurred to me, is it possible, as bizarre as it sounds, that perhaps an alien intelligence has been imprisoned on this planet for eons, and that it has slowly uh, guided us with images of what the next technology should be in order for us to go to the stars in effect, facilitating its own escape. I don't know. But when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch, when it comes to the hitchhiker effect, uh, almost anything is, is possible. Um, our crypto mission for the summer continues. Um, I want to um, thank Janine Holzman, a longtime supporter and listener of uh, the program, for donating um, many mirrors for us to use out in the field um, during our experiments. Um, so that's amazing of her to send that to us. And again, thank you, Janine Holzman, for your support. and. Uh, and we will definitely be sharing any results that we get from that. Um, that is basically all I have for you guys this evening. Um, join me next week. Going to be discussing uh, a subject that I haven't gotten around to in a while. Um, and we're going to delve back into the cryptid world. So, as usual, stay safe out there. The world is crazy and getting crazier. 